Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In just five minutes time you will have covered everything you need to know on the second topic in chapter three on the circulatory system, heart, structure and function. You can find exactly the topics you're looking for by clicking on the banner and make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time a lesson is posted. Today you need to be able to identify the locations of each section of the heart, to describe the functions of the atria, ventricles and valves, and describe the pathway of blood as it moves through the heart. The heart can be defined as a muscular organ that fills with blood returning from the body in the veins and contracts to force blood away through the arteries. Essentially the heart is a pump. Every time it contracts or beats, it forces blood throughout the body, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the working muscles and removing waste products such as carbon dioxide. But how does the heart achieve this? To answer this question, we first need to study its anatomy or the structures that it's comprised of. The heart is essentially made of two pumps, each of which forces blood through a different circuit of blood vessels. The right side or pulmonary circuit delivers blood to the lungs where it picks up oxygen before returning to the left side, the systemic circuit, which sends the newly oxygenated blood to the body's tissues. The heart is made of four chambers. The right and left atria can be found at the top, while the ventricles sit just below. To remember which side is left and right, imagine the image you're looking at is your own heart and that you're facing outwards towards the screen. The right atrium fills with deoxygenated blood returning from the body, while the left atrium receives blood from the lungs. As the atria contract, blood is forced directly downwards and into the ventricles. The ventricles have thick muscular walls as they need to pump blood over much greater distances. The right ventricle directs deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary circuit to the lungs, while the left side delivers oxygenated blood throughout the body. Next we have the valves, which are important as they prevent blood from flowing backwards as the chambers contract. The two atrioventricular valves are located, as the name suggests, between the atria and the ventricles. They stop blood moving back into the atria as the ventricles contract. There are also two semilunar valves, situated at the base of the major arteries that carry blood away from the heart. If it weren't for these valves, some of the blood that had just left the ventricles would otherwise flow back in. There are four main blood vessels that connect the heart to the rest of the body. The vena cava is a vein that delivers deoxygenated blood from the body's tissues to the right atrium. From the right ventricle below, blood leaves the heart via the pulmonary artery, which transports blood to the lungs. Blood then returns from the lungs via the pulmonary vein and is deposited into the left atrium before leaving the heart through the aorta, the largest artery in the body which carries oxygenated blood to the tissues. Now we're already on our final learning objective, which is to describe the pathway of blood as it moves through the heart. A single contraction and relaxation of the heart is known as a cardiac cycle, and you need to be able to name the structures through which blood passes in order. The cycle begins as deoxygenated blood returns to the right side of the heart, having released its oxygen into the body's tissues. It flows through the vena cava and into the right atrium, gradually filling the chamber. Once full, the atrium contracts, forcing blood downwards through the atrioventricular valve and into the right ventricle. Almost immediately, the ventricle contracts, forcing the valve to close, which prevents blood from flowing back into the atrium. Instead, it rushes through the semilunar valve and into the pulmonary artery, which directs it towards the lungs. When it reaches the lungs, specifically the alveoli, it unloads carbon dioxide and picks up more oxygen molecules that bind to the hemoglobin contained within the red blood cells. The now oxygenated blood returns back to the heart via the pulmonary vein, where it enters the left atrium. Remember, veins direct blood back to the heart. Now, just as before, the atrium contracts, forcing blood down through the atrioventricular valve and into the left ventricle. The ventricle then contracts, causing the atrioventricular valve to close and the semilunar valve to open. Blood then flows through the semilunar valve and into the aorta, which transports blood throughout the body enabling oxygen and nutrients to be delivered to wherever they are needed. The cardiac cycle is now complete. Now you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know for topic 3.2 on the structure and function of the heart. I know I've given you a lot of information here and the cardiac cycle in particular may take some time to remember. 
Fortunately, you can come back and watch this video as many times as you need to, but in the meantime, here's an opportunity to test your understanding by placing the statements in the correct order. You can start with the first statement in the list, and I've left out the valves to simplify things this time, but feel free to add those into the sequence if you can. Brilliant work if you got that one right, but not to worry if you didn't. Remember, learning takes time and repetition is key. Make sure you come back next time for the final lesson in chapter three on the circulatory system and subscribe and click the bell if you haven't already done so. Also, please feel free to leave a question down in the comments section if there's anything you're struggling to understand. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.